Hi, my name is Bruce Tromberg. I'm the director of the Beckman Laser Institute and Medical Clinic at the University of California, Irvine. Uh, we develop a number of biophotonic and biomedical optics technologies. We have a clinic that has three to 4,000 patient visits per year. What's very unique about our clinic is that we have a number of IRB, Institutional Review Board, protocols in new technologies in biomedical optics brought to the bedside. So we're a very unusual place in that we have basic science and technology development labs that are moving technologies very quickly from the bench top to the bedside. I'd like uh, to take you through the building and show you these. Hi, I'm Stuart Nelson. I'm a professor of surgery, biomedical engineering, and dermatology at the University of California, Irvine. I'm also the medical director of the Beckman Laser Institute and medical clinic here at UCI. The Beckman Laser Institute uh, was established in June of 1986 by Michael Burns and Arnold Beckman. Uh, it was their desire to develop a resource that would be developed uh, and dedicated uh, to the development of laser devices as well as other biomedical optical te technologies. My research is involved is in the treatment of port wine stain birthmarks uh, in infants and young children. These are vascular malformations of the skin that patients are born with. These lesions are progressive. They become darker insidiously over the course of time. And if left untreated, the patient can develop soft tissue hypertrophy of the underlying soft tissue muscle and bone, which further distorts their facial features. So the goal of my research program has been to develop novel and new technologies so that we can treat these birthmarks more effectively while treating patients also younger so that they can get the most benefit from the treatment. Hi, my name is Soren Konecki and I'm a postdoc here at the Beckman Laser Institute. And one of the technologies we're working on is spatial frequency domain imaging. And so the basic idea is we have a camera here and we want to combine the benefits of photography that is ubiquitous in both medicine and biology with the benefits of diffuse optics, which is a spectroscopic method to get precise measurements of the concentration and the, of, of chromophores in tissue and the optical properties of the tissue. If you see here, there's a, a projector that basically is projecting s sine waves of intensity onto a sample. And by measuring how those sine waves blur as they go into the camera, then we can get the tissue optical properties. But the great thing about it is then we get a photograph too. So we get a quantitative photograph of the tissue. My name is Xander Lin, and I'm an MD-PhD student in uh, Bruce's lab. And my project is to image Alzheimer's disease uh, in a preclinical model, so a mouse model. And so we look at um, the hemoglobin, oxy-deoxyhemoglobin, and how it functionally changes when we stimulate certain parts of the brain. And we hope to see um, differences between a regular mouse and an Alzheimer's mouse. My name is Darren Robelaire. I'm a postdoc at the Beckman Laser Institute working for Dr. Bruce Schomburg. And today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about our uh, DOSI technology that stands for Diffuse Optical Spectroscopic Imaging. And this instrumentation uh, we use to get functional properties from thick tissues such as breast tissue so we can extract properties such as oxine deoxyhemoglobin, water, and fat. And we use this technology to monitor patients, uh, specifically breast cancer patients, while they're receiving chemotherapy, typically before their surgery. So we use this technology to monitor those functional changes during the course of therapy to see if and predict if they're going to respond to therapy. This technology is based, um, in addition to lasers, on RF technology. And this is our last generation device. And we've been able to miniaturize this instrumentation so that it's the size of a microwave now or even the size of about an external hard drive. So the capability in this box is approximately equal to the capability of this large device. My name is Tom O'Sullivan. I'm also a postdoc here at the Beckman Laser Institute. Uh, I work for Dr. Bruce Trumberg along with Darren here. And together we're going to demonstrate our real-time uh, functional spectroscopic imaging technology, DOSI. So using this new technology, uh, we can, as I mentioned before, get quantitative values of oxy and deoxyhemoglobin water and fat from tissue. So Tom has a probe on his arm that's measuring um, photons that are penetrating through his muscle. And on the screen here, we're displaying real-time images or real-time data of oxy and deoxyhemoglobin. Oxy's in the red and deoxy's in the green, as well as oxygen saturation and total hemoglobin. And we can look at that over time 
and we can do this in, say, diabetic patients to determine if their utilization of oxygen is equivalent to, say, a normal volunteer to help develop diagnostic methods or to help understand biology better. This is based on the same technology we use in our breast cancer patients. And in fact, uh, this exact system we take up to the uh, chemotherapy infusion center regularly uh, because we want to study on a very short time scale the effect that these drugs are having on these patients and uh, with the goal of being able to very early predict um, the efficacy of those drugs in that setting. Hi, my name is uh, Owen Yang. I'm a graduate student here at uh, Beckman Laser Institute and I work in the laser speckle laboratory. And uh, the project that uh, we are working on right now is using laser speckle as an instrument to help treat uh, Paul Weinstein's get, to give an indication on whether or not blood vessels have been coagulated successfully uh, post-treatment. So just to talk a little bit about the system, it's a laser speckle system. We shine a laser on um, the surface and the light that comes back will give us information about how much uh, blood flow there is on the surface of the skin, uh, where mostly the blood perfusion. This is a Paul Weinstein patient, so I'm going to use the pulse dye laser to coagulate the blood vessels underneath the skin and the skin will look bruised as a result of me doing the laser treatment. But what we're looking for in the images is the reduction in blood flow. that will tell me that we clotted the blood vessels successfully underneath the skin. So hopefully after the treatment, you could see coagulation of the blood vessels and a decrease in flow, which we should be able to see on this using this laser speckle system. And you could see these brighter colors indicating more blood flow, which is what you expect in a port wine stain because you have dilated blood vessels, you have more concentrated blood vessels in the area of a poor wine stain, which is uh, seen here with the brighter colors. What you want to see is this image here on the right where you have, after treatment, a darker color in the area of treatment where that indicates you have less blood flow, which uh, is exactly what we want. And if, if you were to see areas of brighter colors, that would probably indicate that you did not successfully coagulate those uh, regions. As our director, Bruce Tromberg, likes to say, from bench top to bedside because we literally can take technology that our basic scientists develop in the labs and then bring it down the hall on this side of the building where it's applied in the clinical management of patients.